Good evening, everyone. We're back with the Rev Limit crew. We have some news. What did we find in the oil pan? Chunks ahoy, and not the cookies. That might be, means we might have a crank bearing or two gone, or... Rod bearing. Rod bearing. So we are gonna... Assess pull, the situation. Assess the situation and pull the oil pan, oil pickup off. Put the motor over, take a look and see how bad it is. It was running and driving great, didn't smoke, but we don't want to cause any more problems than we have to if we can prevent this. Because, well, as you can see right there, that's a lot of metal shavings and I already pulled some out and dropped them in the pan by accident because that one, so we, Pretty much narrowed it down to the back half of the block. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully. Simple to use. Less headache than 415 in my mind. I'll pick it up locally from uh, Arctic Auto and Marine. Thanks for the suggestion. Also got uh, the Rough Country leaf spring installed. Anything Scout. E spring pad, U bolts, and their five inch shackle. Nice quality pieces. Good job, guys. Getting into the front end of the frame here. Uh, we got the front end all torn apart, springs pulled out. Uh, sorry, forgot to video that process, but it's very similar as, as the rear. Uh, you have your new spring eye goes into your, your rear mount, goes underneath the differential, under the suspension, and then you have your shackle that hooks to, from your frame mount to your leaf spring. So we also Replace the front frame bushing mount. Uh, factory, these are a metal press-in bushing. These ones were replaced once already with polyurethane bushing, um, but they were not lubricated. They had oversized hardware for this, uh, from the suspension 1000s garbage. We'll be installing the Anything Scout 5 inch shock on the front as well. Um, but yeah, like I was saying, they had oversized hardware for those piece of junk shackles. And they actually had to drill out this sleeve for the larger hardware and it just made a mess of everything. It was over tightened so I would say the front shackles were tightened into a pretty much fixed position not really much room for them to articulate how they should so we addressed that issue got rid of those pieces of junk i'll be cutting them up into little littler pieces so no one else can use those by chance if they find them um and then you know as we said before no cotter pin in the castle nut not a good plan. No boots on the tie rod ends. Also not a good plan. Uh, what's left of the bump stop? Help me! I'm toast! I uh, came to... Once we removed the front wheels off so we could get it lower to the ground, uh, a little bit of trouble because you know the wheel stud would just rotate. Not supposed to do that. Don't be putting just whatever you find laying around in there. There's certain parts for certain reasons and that's one of them. There's two or three that are not as loose as that one but fairly loose. That's by far the worst though. 
So yeah, we're gonna add that to the list of stuff to replace, cause why not? And then we come across, once I took the front leaves out, notice how bad the bushings are. And then also noticed, it looks like a lot of sliding on there. And on here. Hmm. That pin is supposed to fit in the recess in the bottom of the differential to kind of align the leaf springs and the housing. Uh, once you add this, and you don't extend that, then everything can go like this. Not a good plan. Also, I didn't mention that the bolts were finger loose, as many are on this thing. Quite amazed it was still on the road. So whenever you're installing your, not necessarily doesn't have to be a lift, but these springs, um, Make sure all the stuff goes back together the way it should. And if you don't know, just ask. Someone will give you some information whether it's good or not. But it's better than just doing it and assuming it's okay. And then, you know, I'm gonna address the bent engine saddle mount. As the International, she's a little hefty. It's a good thing we put the rest of this scout on Weight Watchers when we scraped about 40 pounds off of it. And then just again, you know, don't have slotted drums. Just don't. That's what's left of that snubber. So we'll get the extended ones because we're... Well, on the bright side, we have a nice coated frame. Four inch rough country in the rear. Yeah, and some are not going to be built more. And this might not, like, it seems... It could be so old, somebody left from the old pan if they ever got inside of it. Who knows? Like, it seems pretty flimsy for bearing material, actually. But, when you go to the upside down, we'll have a look. Well, oh, what's worst case? Worst case, uh, gets, uh... Some attention later on. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, we just put it back together and drive it and it's good. I mean, it's what? Only since 1972. <laughs> Talking about like yesterday, Travis. There's a rebuilt motor. <laughs> yeah. Can of spray paint and it's rebuilt, but actually. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Except when you take the oil pan off. If you want to do that, then you take the oil pan off. Just run it, but don't. Yeah, probably just. A bit. We've got some cardboard we can lay down. Uh, we're going to make a mess. I haven't, I haven't created yes. any more cardboard yet. <laughs> yeah, that's a new one. But I also am missing the, the rod to turn this. And I'll find some cardboard. Do so, you have any out in your second? That is okay, I'll go wiring. Go lunch, we're gonna the, uh, Actually, there's some box right there. Just throw it in. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. Wiring with the insulation cut off as a twist tie? <laughs> That's just good. That's get me home and get me to my driveway, not a, a full time fix. 
Yeah. But those will be problems of the past when we're all done. I thought I heard you. I thought I heard something when you got your hand there. Are you getting all crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Jumping to conclusions. Man, the cylinders look like they be really good. Whoa, which one was that? Right here. Right here and here. So the front ones. The front two cylinders are the ones with the Right there, that's... Yeah, wait till you get about here. I know the filings are in the back of the pan, but... You take a look at these ones here. Just a little bit. That one. That's not the way I'm concerned about them. Probably don't have any no? up and down thing on there. Yeah. Oh. So it's still runnable. Yeah. So this could be something to address later at the It could have very well just been left in. Well, she might have sat dry for a little while. But, we're still good to go. Which is, I think what we'll do is, um, we'll put the electric sender back in so your gauge works. But we're going to put uh, a mechanical gauge underneath the hood. That way we can just verify when we started up and stuff and what we have for oil pressure. Someone's going to be able to do that. I'm just trying to keep this. I know it's got lots of like, really good cross action of cylinder and stuff. I mean, the cylinders don't look like they're. Don't want to somebody drove it out of oil, that's for sure. Oh. This is basically the extent of the inspection. Pretty much. Just clean it up and then reseal it. Yeah. Well, I gotta rebuild the oil pump. Just for it's not like it's wrong, but we got the the rebuild kit, so we're gonna just do it to make sure it's an extra insurance that the whole motor's getting top of us so we don't have further or any future catastrophic failures. No, we can't. <laughs> can't guarantee that. <laughs> can't guarantee it, but we can try to put some preventative maintenance into it. All we know is this won't be the problem. Ones that pick up TV, I'll, I'll take care of that too. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, what else you got going on? Well, Dale's gonna continue on with this now that we avoided uh, somewhat of a disaster. <laughs> yeah, I'll take this uh, the oil pump off, I'll take it to the bench, I'll 
take it apart, rebuild it, and continue cleaning up all the parts and reassembling them to make it look like the factory sent it out. Rebuilt. Rebuilt. So the cleanup part's gonna take a bit, so. But I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe somebody do you know, somebody drop like a washer and a oh, gasket, gasket material. No, it's not gas metal. But it ain't it ain't that old gasket material from the intakes kind of thing? Well no, it wouldn't have got down there that fast. No 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 no. I meant like from, if some somebody puts another one oh, on. Oh no, this is definitely metal, but I don't know from where. This is a chunk of gasket. Yeah. That's a chunk of gasket. That's dirt. All right, well, we're narrowing this down. Panning for gold. In 1972, you gotta check everything out before you start putting her back together. Gas can surface everything. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck On the plus side, there's no damage to the timing gears at all. They they look really well. Right here, they look in amazing shape. I guess we got it upside down. Let's grab that flashlight, see if we can see any, uh... but you don't see a, well, you're not gonna see it on the cam bearings, but. Should we pull a cam, let's we pull a cam plate off on the back, but. No. No. But if this is a stock cam from 1972, no, I'm pretty sure this has been rebuilt once, cause. Usually they don't have the connecting rod stamped with numbers. Uh, cool, because uh, I was going to say if this is, there's a. I uh, rebuild the oil pump? Yep. Okay. What do you want to take a cam out? Uh, Home lifters. Well, I mean, once you get to that point, you might as well just. Rebuild it? Yep. Push up the cam bearings. Yeah, you might. Yeah, you gotta put new cam bearings in it, lifters. Um, yeah, and whatever else. Super. The machine shop would find, I guess. I'm trying to make this with what has happened here. Just run some higher synthetic or uh, nope. high, high mileage. Higher thicker weight oil. Yeah. Uh, uh, like a diesel, like 15 and 40 hotel or something like that. Yeah, you know, like a diesel motor. Just to take off the clearance of the camber and it's kind of. Well, since you're here, Travis, what do you think about this uh, project you got going on? It's going okay as long as we don't find any more uh, <laughs> sneaky little endings. It was uh, good to look at the time in. I knew. Just about done over here. Just about done. Got about another 10% left. It's sealed with another quick coat. And uh, the frame should be good to go. Yeah. 
It's pretty snazzy for a 50 year old girl. It's looking way better, yeah. I found out when I twisted the piston and snapped everything. The piston is still in the, in the cylinder, but the rod was not connected. I figured it out when I saw everything twisted, and I was like, okay, well, hmm. there's a problem. What we got over here? Uh, we are adding the four degree caster shim to the leaf pack. As the other video that we did, it was uh, just floating around and not locked into the differential. So when you're uh, doing it properly, you just don't add the shim on top of the pin like that, let's say. You actually bolt it down through on the leaf pack. That way the pin can still engage the differential. And the differential doesn't slide all over the place, like it was. So this is your factory bolt that will come in your four inch rough country lift. If you're adding the caster shim, just go to your, you can either order them from IH Parts America or local spring shop if you still have one in your, wherever you live. And then yeah, you just unbolt it. Slide it back through. Sweet it a bit. Make sure you're putting this on the right way. Front springs I believe are the same left to right, so it doesn't really matter. Bolt it back together. And this is what you're weighing the garbage can with. That's what the finished product will look like. And then we can get back to assembling the front suspension once I clean up the uh, diff where the uh, pin goes in since it was kind of marred up from it floating around. Okay, so we yank this out here. Let me make sure I get that off. That's a filler tube. Put it back in, which if your distributor's not lined up with the oil pump, it's not going to oil right. The time is not going to be right. Things are just going to go wrong. Perfect. And that's catastrophic failure when you do that. <laughs> but unfortunately, with these International Scouts, there is no replacement oil pump. If there's a problem with your oil pump, you need the rebuild kit, and you got to pay attention to what you're doing, and you have to rebuild it step by step and make sure you do it right. Because otherwise, if this isn't working, no matter what you do there, it's just going to blow apart on you and you're going to be in trouble. Alright, Andy is just finishing up the front spring here. Just did this side. See you going. Doing that side. Attempting. Attempting. Installing these anything scout five inch shackles along with the four inch rough country lift. Nice quality pieces. Highly, highly 
suggest them. Unless you're good at fabbing, you could probably make your own, but sometimes it's just more time efficient to purchase them. And like I kind of stated in the, another video, these are the pins that you want to make sure go into the locating dowel on there. Um, this was the other shim that was in place, sliding back and forth. You can actually see it's notched out where it was riding against the U bolts, broken and deeply worn in from the axle walking back and forth under just normal suspension operation could be under braking. Hmm. Always make sure the hole matches the pin size and when in doubt bolt it through to your leaf spring pack. Yeah that sounds like 10. And he's taking care of that. Dale's working on the uh, oil pump. Pretty much got it. Pretty much back to Just gonna put the sleeve on, prime it, and see if she works. Perfect. Okay. Gotta put that in. I am chipping away at the uh, years of petrified grime and dirt. Clean. Not so much. Well, like I said, there's still a few spots that we can address. Now that we're getting it back together, you're putting on shiny parts, you're starting to focus on stuff we miss. Yeah, I mean top half still hasn't been cleaned. Right? No, it, it really basically hasn't. So basically like we can mask and paint this like we were talking. Yeah, we'll have to move that towards the, towards the back. We don't want to do that up here. But we got everything sealed up back here. And she's coming back together. A few block heaters in, which it never had before. In Saskatchewan, that's always a good thing to have. With our Temperamental winters we have. And the intake. 